Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at a PLC programming example of a pelletizer and we will be applying the uh, five steps to PLC program development to the pelletizer example. And what you'll see up on my screen here is we have factory IO um, running and it's actually connected to my uh, Rix PLC and we're connected through the um, Ethernet port, which is located right here, and my uh, Do More Designer software is connected to my USB port, connected right here. Now, the first step in our, our uh, program development is to define the task. So, what this machine will actually do is it will actually stack um, boxes onto pellets or pallets, and here is an example of what I mean by that. Here's uh, two layers on a pallet and in my next one you'll see that we have four layers on a pallet and what you'll notice is that the boxes are uh, uh, separated there uh, one layer goes one way and the other way layer goes the other way that way they uh, combine together so that they form a, a solid structure when they're on a pallet and later they can be skidded etc so going back to my uh, this is my uh, factory I.O. and this is the machine itself. Now, well, so what we're doing is we're bringing boxes along the uh, top of this uh, uh, conveyor belt. Then we have here a pusher. The pusher then pushes each layer of the, or each row of the boxes onto this plate. And the, then when it builds up the, the uh, layer on the plate it will have a clamp which is located right here it clamps it together and make sure that everything's square the plate will open up and it will deposit the layer on top of the pallet and when we have enough layers what will happen is the elevator will drop all the way to the bottom and then proceed out here to the exit and the new new pallet will come in and go in the elevator and go back up again. So that's basically the sequence of operation. Here is our control panel, and on our control panel we have our start, stop, our reset. We have manual auto, and in manual we can then set the layers of the number of boxes that we're going to have. And you can see it goes up to one to four. So we'll leave that at two, and then we have a counter that counts the number of boxes itself. And then we have our reset that resets the whole. Uh, unit itself. So, if we uh, the next stage, once we define the task and know what that's uh, about, is to find the inputs and outputs for our system. And if we look at the uh, factory I/O, you'll see the under the drivers. You'll see a l whole list of um, it automatically comes up and says this is what we're talking to and this is what the inputs and outputs are. So you see pallet at entry, pallet at exit, um, all of my loading, unloading, uh, my start, stop, reset, emergency stop, auto, and my layers button. I also have on my uh, input side my pallet feed, load feed, exit. So this is actually the outputs themselves, um, or sorry, the, the inputs uh, to turn on those outputs. So here's all the, so my actuators themselves or my sensors on the other side. So. Uh, you also notice there's a holding register for my counter and another holding register for my layers. So that's my I.O. And once I have my I.O. established, then I have to define the logic that's going to happen uh, within the controller in order to uh, do this program. And when we do that, um, what I'd like to do is actually write it all up. Um, and, I, and I actually wrote it up into an Excel spreadsheet. So this develops my sequence table. And what I did was discover that basically when I was thinking about it, my top layer is my, uh, my uh, uh, pallet table. So um, what you see up here is my pallet. So this is loading the pallet, bringing it up into the elevator. And my bottom layer is my actually boxes. And the link between them is actually the counters to make sure that your layer is complete so you can open the doors. So I split it up into two different ones. You can split it up as many times you want as long as you fully understand exactly what's going to happen within that sequence. So once you've discovered that, then the next step after um, 
after doing that is actually the development of the PLC logic itself. So what we'll do is we will look at it and the first thing I do is I start out with my start stop. You'll see I have my, uh, my um, start light here and it's just a simple latching circuit and then based on that start light bit what we do is um, then carry that on throughout the program. So here's my start light, my warning light, and you'll notice is there's a warning light that actually is like a beacon that will be active every time the unit is running. And then we have a stop light, which is currently on right now, and we can see that on our, our, our unit. Um, then we have our pallet feed. So there's our pallet coming in, or our skid coming in. And then we have a, a load pallet. Um, this is the conveyor belt that actually brings the skid into it, so onto the elevator itself. Then we have, we put in a little off delay timers, and that's for our exit conveyor, so that our exit conveyor can extend a little bit further, so that it can actually truly exit the entire program. Then we have a the elevator sequencing, move to limit, and then elevator up, elevator down. So how that actually works is if I have the move to limit on and I have the elevator up, it will go all the way up to the, the upper limit for the elevator. Subsequently, if I have the move to limit and I have the elevator down button or elevator down condition, it will move all the way down. Next, in order to keep track of this in the program, what I've done is create another bit, C10, that tells me if the elevator is all the way up or not. So in other, way, other words, it's all the way down. So just one bit will tell us all the way up or all the way down. Then we have the, the number of layers on the pallets. We track it using counter zero. And every time the plate opens, it adds a new layer to that counter. So you see here, we have it currently set for two, which is what we just uh, set on our um, factory IO panel. Then what we have is boxes on uh, on the layer. So we have six boxes on every layer, and each layer is alternating, so the boxes interlock. So I have two counters for that, counter one and counter two. And there's nothing really uh, significant about that, except for that every other counter, um, what we have is we alternate them. So we move different set points into the counters to get us alternating layers. So we have uh, rows and uh, think of it rows of boxes and a number of uh, uh, number of rows and then boxes in those rows. So we have three and two, and then we have two and three. Then what we have is if it's a, if it's the uh, three in a row, then we have the turn uh, output on, which actually forces the boxes into the other sequence. Then we have our box feed and our load belt. This actually brings those boxes into the machine itself. Then we have our push. That pushes the, the layer boxes onto the plate. Again, we have timers in there to um, trigger other events that happen within the program. So we on our push, we have a set and we have a reset. Then we have a clamp. And the, the clamp, that's before that straightens up the the layer before we open the plate. So we have a clamp and we have an open plate. Again, we have a time delay on the open plate. So as the plate opens, then we look again afterwards for the, um, the pressure on the plate input switch. Then we have an open plate reset. We have then a clamp reset. And then we're into the layer setting. And the layer setting is, this is where we hit the uh, panel on our factory I.O. We can increment it and then we if we compare this to the maximum value of four then we move one back in. So it's just an incremental uh, counter until we get to the top and then recycle again. Then we have a box counter. The box counter just increments one um, every time we have a box at the entry on the leading edge and when we do it increments the count box by one. You can see that we can reset it by using the reset signal um, with the uh, the auto uh, in the manual 
um, um, a auto manual switch in the manual position. And that's the end of the program here. At the very start of the program, what we do is, uh, because we're using factory I.O., we simulate this program. And in order to simulate the program, what we do is we take our factory I.O. and we map them to the physical inputs themselves of the PLC. That way they will activate internally and our PTLC scan, once, it's, uh, once it sees the factory I.O. inputs, it'll set our actual inputs before it solves our logic. That's why it's at the beginning of our program. And so we do that for all of our inputs. And then we map all of our actual outputs um, to the to the memory area as well. So here's my uh, my outputs, the actual outputs that the program is telling me to do. I then map to our physical outputs here, and then factory I/O then takes over and then actually controls it. So that is how we control using factory I/O, and it's actually talking um, or communicating um, Ethernet, and we're using the protocol Modbus. Uh, TCP which is the Ethernet protocol for Modbus and the factory IO is acting as a client which is similar to your master and the bricks PLC is acting as my, um, my server which is actually um, similar to a slave those uh, terminologies can get mixed up periodically so once I have developed my program then the last thing to do is actually test the program. So this is the fifth step in our program development. So in order to test it, let's just go to the factory I.O. And you can see we're connected down here to our uh, PLC. And what we can do is we can actually um, start this uh, unit up. We'll put it into auto mode. And let's just uh, take a look. We should see our rollers rolling. Here's our uh, skid coming in. And it will actually be carried up the elevator. And you can see our boxes being started up. It's coming in and building up our layers on our plate. Now with that layer, we'll empty and go down. And then we have this turn that now turns the the box on the layer so it alternates them. So there's our count of three now going on to that with with two rows. Before it was uh, two boxes with three rows. And once it's done the elevator moves down and then it exits. Well then the next one loads up and the whole operation then repeats itself. And we can see um, the alternating rows again, building up the layers and uh, doing exactly as we wanted to with our program development. All right. Now all the links and documentation can be found on our website at accautomation.ca. If you like this video and like to see more, there are three ways in which you can help us out. You can give us a thumbs up so other people can find this information just as you have. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel at the end of the video, or you can go to ACC Automation and subscribe to our website. When you do, notification will be given to you every time we publish new content to the site. You'll also get two free ebooks on numbering systems and robust data logging. And the third thing to do to help us out is to tell a friend or colleague about the site. Alright, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.